So during the week, I had the privilege of uh, giving a talk to a number of students up in uh, Queen's University. Obviously, it was virtual. I was down here, and they were up there in Belfast. And uh, so it was a great, it was a, it was a lovely bunch, a lovely bunch. And what was very, very noticeable right from the beginning was that it was about 60% lads, 60% guys, and 40% girls. And for some reason, none of the girls had their cameras turned on, and all the lads did. I don't know, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Uh, but, so, uh, whatever. I, have, I can't even hypothesize, I don't know. Uh, it's just it's strange. There you go. So, so I was talking, because afterwards then there was a bit of Q&A. So I was asking the lads, have they, have they any questions? And one of them said, um, far, so F-A-R-R-R, -R -R, <laughs> which is in Dun uh, Belfast English for father. Uh, far, um, how can I pray better? <laughs> how can I pray better? And it was just, it was like, you have university students, right? So he's a 20, 21 year old young man asking, Father, how can I pray better? And whatever the answer was, I hope it was okay, but the point was, the question was so good. <laughs> the question was so good. A 21 year old young man asking, Father, how can I pray better? And I was reminded of uh, a friend of mine, Father Gary Thoman. Um, he was a uh, chaplain there in, in Queens for years, and uh, a good priest, a good priest. And there was a bunch of guys who came to him and said, uh, he, he was the chaplain, like, so they came to him and they said, Father, we want to go deeper into this relationship with, with the Lord. We want to be, be men of prayer. We want to be men of God. How can we do it? How can we do that? Like, how can we become men of, of, of God? And Father Gary said his reaction was actually to well up in tears. He was just, not like this. <laughs> <laughs> he just welled up at, this, at the fact that, well, I don't know, four or five, six, I don't, know, I don't know how many there were. But they came to him saying, we want to be, you know, we want to go further in our faith. We want to be men of God. How do we do this? Like, And he said, just as, as, a, as a pastor, as a priest, just to see young men uh, who want to, engage in their faith not just on a superficial level but to go deeper it's so so beautiful and and, and yet this should be normal this should be normal it should be completely normal that any baptized catholic would want to continuously go deeper in their faith that any young man would want to go deeper in his faith that any young woman would want to go deeper this should be completely normal this should be a uh, priest daily bread right uh, helping people to, to go deeper and I think a, an obstacle to that <clears throat> is getting stuck on the externals. You know, we see it in our, in our gospel today, uh, the scribes and Pharisees who just can't get over this kind of, kind of ridiculous, if you will, mental hurdle of nothing good can come from Galilee. You know, instead of like, so it can't, he can't be the Messiah because he comes from Galilee. What? How does that work like, you know? I mean, so he's supposed to be <coughs> a descendant of, of, of David and, uh, <coughs> and come from Bethlehem. Well, ask the guy where he was born. It's not rocket science. Like, but just this, these kind of mental blocks. And another problem, which I think is far more prevalent maybe in our lives than we might realize, again, is, is getting stuck on these external things, you know? I do some good things externally. So back a little over a year ago, that was maybe going to Mass on a regular basis. Or, or praying, these are all good things. We're not saying for a second not to do them. But ultimately, ultimately, what's key to deepening our relationship with the Lord is internal. It's internal. You know, uh, we, we spoke a while ago about the, the, the idea of, of playing for an audience of one. There's a movement in, in the States there where um, athletes will write or tattoo on their cro what they call it? rocket racket ball thing, croquet, their version of hurling, whatever. Uh, their arms, okay, <laughs> they tattoo on their arms. A01, right? Audience of one. Audience of one. The idea being that whatever they do, they do for the greater glory of God. So win, lose, or draw, all glory goes to God. You know, so you'll see that. I'm not sure if it's still legal. I know it was, it was allowed for a while anyway, that you'd see it, the American football players would have it here on their cheeks, so you'd see it through their helmets. Um, and it's just a great idea, a fantastic idea. You know, I'm doing everything for an audience of one. 
Because when you're doing it for an audience of one, when you're living your life for an audience of one, when you're praying for an audience of one, it doesn't matter if no one sees you. It doesn't matter if no one knows. Because it wasn't for them anyway. You're doing it just because God sees you. And then, not only is it enough then that, that God sees you, but it, it is enough that God sees me. It is enough for me that God knows. That's, that's a whole new level of, of spirituality right there. You know, because then, while, as I say, the, the, the externals, we need to do them, that we have, you know, it's part of our, of, our, of our Catholic tradition, regular mass attendance, again, COVID aside, um, but ordinarily, regular mass attendance, <clears throat> regular prayer, maybe for, for those then who are a little more experienced in the faith, an, an occasional pilgrimage, Nock, Lourdes, Fatima, Medjugorje, wherever it may be, these are all uh, great, wonderful. But ultimately, your life isn't lived here in a chapel, and your life isn't lived in a place of pilgrimage. Your life is lived in your house, in your car, in your place of work, in your family, in your bedroom, late at night, early in the morning, all those occasions where you're alone, where no one sees. That's where all that we learn here, and all the grace that we get here, that's where it's actually lived out, because we don't live in a chapel. We live out there. So this, this, this idea like that I can live my life for an audience of one. It is enough that the Lord sees me. And if I live my life in that way, it means that suddenly everything starts to take on a, a much deeper meaning. Because it means now <clears throat> in the middle of the night, you know, I wake up <clears throat> and the phone is there. And I go, well, I could, uh, could just scroll through the news, see what's happening. I could scroll through Facebook, see who likes me. <laughs> um, I could, uh, you know, or there is my rosary beads beside my phone. I have quick discernment here. What do you think the Lord wants you to do? Now, it could be that he wants you to text your mom, who you haven't texted in a week because you've been so flat out busy. Um, but it could well be that he just wants you to pick up the rosaries. And at the end of the day, only one person is going to see this. Only the Lord <clears throat> will see what you choose to do. So what do you do? Do we live our lives for an audience of one? Or do we live our lives, our faith life, so people will kind of see you, we're ticking the boxes, and it looks good, and it's all for, for others. But not for him. This Saturday, each Saturday, tradition, traditionally dedicated to remembering Our Lady, Our Lady's intercession, Our Lady's unity, Our Lady's purity, Our Lady's prayer. We can ask her today for this grace to go deeper, which doesn't necessarily again mean, <clears throat> it doesn't necessarily mean doing more. It could mean doing more, but often it means doing, doing the same things, but just doing them for the Lord. And maybe certain things that might need to be cut out or adjusted and do that for love of the Lord. And when you're tired and you choose to serve anyway, you do it not for thanks, but for love of the Lord. And when you see something needs to be done, something's out of place, <clears throat> the grass needs to be cut, the bins need to be emptied, um, you just do it out of love for the Lord. And it doesn't matter that no one sees. It doesn't matter to you that no one sees. We do it all for love of him. And then our whole lives become transformed into one act of love after the next, after the next, after the next. every act of service, every act of love, my life is now transformed into love. It's an amazing way to live. It's a school that we're, we're all in, I know I am anyway. Just trying to do everything out of love. So Lord, we thank you for your calling to each one of us to go deeper. Your calling to do everything, every simple little action and service out of love for you. That this Lenten season may be a real preparation for a rebirth, a resurrection of our own faith and of our own relationship with you. Amen.